I believe that comics are Americans' mythology. Uh, when you stop and think about it. I mean, we've got Paul Bunyan and Johnny Appleseed, but really uh, our great fictional heroes have come from comic books and comic strips. Emergency. Batman speaking. Warning all of you to brace yourselves for big news. The biggest. earliest memories, my father worked all the time, so he, my dad had a tire and muffler business and appliances at that time in the early uh, to mid 70s. So for him, it was something that he could do with his sons. So my father was instrumental in those kind of things. So my dad's always been a hoarder, if you will. So it's just his opportunity to collect things and he, he naturally already did that. So as a result of that, my brother and I were kind of inclined to collect stuff. And so I remember my first comic book was a Amazing Spider-Man number nine and uh, next door to my dad's tire muffler shop was a, a shop called Bill Bethke's Antiques, which is still there to this day. His, his daughter now runs it. And they had one comic book, and that was an Amazing Spider-Man number nine. And we spent $15 on it. My brother and I combined our funds together to get that particular book. So that book was our first instrumental book in our collection. So that became kind of the foundation of what we thought, hey, the old books, that's what we love. And when my dad's friends, a guy named D.H. Shaw, actually had large collections. So as word got out that we loved comics and we collected comics, we were invited to go to his house. And my brother and I actually went to youth group that night. It was a Sunday night, I'll never forget. My brother comes back with a full stack of Iron Man, which was at that time my favorite character. So not only did I have number, uh, I think it was 78 all the way to number one, but below that were Tales of Suspense all the way down to number 39, which is the first appearance of Iron Man. So I was, it was blowing my mind. And at the time, you know, we didn't spend very much money on them. My dad got all the Thunder Agents. My brother got all of the Avengers and the Daredevil. So those books became foundational to us. Being raised in retail and understanding those dynamics, it became like, wow, these things are valuable and they're sought after and there's a secondary market to those. So that began the quest at that point to, to open something more. So ironically, we were, we were loyal customers at Golden's uh, book exchange here in Waco. And I remember one day we were in the store and this would have been probably 82 or 83. And literally my hindsight was on the door. And if you know where the counter is, that's a long line. And my dad just said casually, he said, this town could use another comic book store. And my brother and I were both like, yes. This was a t-shirts plus and it had closed uh, recently. And so we leased it from uh, Mr. Guthrie at that time in 1980, probably late 84, mid 84. And uh, he allowed us to open later on. So we had some grace built into that. Obviously uh, we sell most everything that you can imagine in the comic book realm and sports card realm uh, from new products that are released every single week. Wednesday obviously is new comic book day. So we have Marvel and DC and Dark Horse and uh, every imaginable company that uh, produces books, and that's a big factor for a lot of our customers. But in addition to that, we also carry trade paperbacks, and we have one of the largest trade paperback sections that you'll ever see. Plus, in addition to that, we carry lots of vintage, which still sell to this day. So if people want, like I mentioned just a minute ago, Amazing Spider-Man number 252, or an Amazing Spider-Man number one, we have those in stock. So customers want to invest in those, or they are you know, treasuring those for their, for their collection, that's something that we carry. From eight to 88, we have, everyone has their preference, Primarily male, but something uh, enriching about this industry is that how it's become much more female oriented. So the heroes, uh, the exposure, the uh, customer base understands and grasps that. In addition to that, I would say that, thing, that television shows like Big Bang Theory have made it accessible. So they see that that's not something that's impenetrable. They can actually, you know, I have grandmothers that see me and they come in, they're like, this is where Sheldon shops, those kind of things. And so that kind of engagement allows people to enter into a pretty cool little store that's been here since 1985. 
most, I think most people don't expect to find some, a store like this in Waco, Texas. They come from other places. And I have lots of customers internationally as well as across the continent who obviously revere our store because we do things well. So if we're gonna do comics, Star Wars, you know, baseball cards, whatever it may be, we're gonna do it to the best of our ability. And so customers appreciate, they want, they want that nuance. They want somebody who's committed. And that's the same reason that we all search out little holes in the wall when we go to other towns, right? We want the best seafood when we go to the coast. We want the best Mexican food when we go to a, a San Antonio. Whatever it may be, everybody wants the best. And they want that experience. They want that, it's called shoppertainment. And we provide that on another level because customers don't expect, number one, to be engaged, be friendly, be, have an atmosphere of professionalism, and do everything that we do to the greatest extent. We had the idea, the Pizza Patron that was there left, and we had the opportunity to open a game store. And that was always going to be, it was a game store. But my wife has been a caterer for three years at that time, and we decided, hey, it's got a kitchen in it, she could have a professional catering kitchen. And the reality was where we just told her, hey, you can just serve food to the gamers on the weekends. Well, that blew up. So Butter My Biscuit, which is the name of the restaurant inside, has blown up now. And so people are finding it and enjoying it. And in fact, just now at UPS, a lady stopped me and said, hey, I ate there the other day. I loved it. So we all eat. We're all part of this society. We're all communicating on different levels. And so now those, the gamers have to share that with people wanting to eat. So video games, coffee, craft beers, food, obviously board games, Pokemon, Magic, those kind of realms are all crossing the streams. We like to say it like Ghostbusters. We cross the streams. We dared to cross the streams. Excuse me, Egon. You said crossing the streams was bad. Cross the streams. You're going to endanger us. You're going to endanger our client, the nice lady who paid us in advance before she became a dog. And so we've done that. So it's rare to have a unique place like this. Waco needs more cool places. And this is what we've provided in, in King's Landing and Buttermilk Biscuit. It's about commitment to a relationship. So we know there's customers out there who appreciate this, this forum. They appreciate this opportunity. They appreciate this medium of, of media, right? This medium of, of literature. There's only three things that America is actually known for. That's quilting, jazz music, and comic books that we actually created. So to have that in Waco, Texas, and customers who come from Colleen and Coppers Cove and College Station and Austin and Hillsboro and all these different dynamics that come here to enjoy that, that's something that encourages us. It's a, it's a, a positive symbiotic relationship. So customers want things, we're here to apply that and react to that and obviously provide that on, a, on another level.